There's this super famous scene in Goodfellas where Paulie is in prison and he's preparing part of the meal, slicing garlic super thin, like with a razor blade thin. It's always stuck with me because I always used to put garlic to a press. Now, according to Anthony Bourdain, misuse of garlic is a crime. Don't put it through a press. I don't know what that junk is that squeezes out of the end of those things, but it ain't garlic. Shoot. Guilty. Now, my wife's a big fan of Goodfellas, with her Italian family and all, and after rewatching it the other day, it got me thinking. I could use this film to memorize something. And why not memorize a delicious recipe that uses legal methods of garlic mutilation? Now, since this video is all about movies and cooking, I thought, why not learn one of my favorite on-screen cooked dishes? Aglio e olio. I mean, look at ScarJo's face right here. Wouldn't you want to try that pasta too? I always talk about using actual places for memory palaces to store lists of things. If you don't know what a memory palace is, check out this video right now. But it doesn't always have to be an actual place. You can actually use scenes from a movie to memorize those same things. Yeah, movies. Anyways, the recipe is insanely simple. It's basically got six ingredients, so I thought, why not memorize this one? Here's what you'll need. One head of garlic, some high quality extra virgin olive oil, some red pepper flakes, a bushel of parsley, a lemon or two, and some pasta. Spaghetti or linguine is fine. Okay, first let's talk about memorizing a recipe. Like, what do you actually need to know? And what can you kind of not bother with? So. I guess the idea of knowing a recipe is that you could say while you're out and about, hey, I would like to make this dish. I know what I need and I know the steps to make it. So that might involve you actually going to the grocery store, remembering what ingredients you need or remembering whether you already have them and if you need to add any of the missing items. Then you obviously need to know the steps. Cook the pasta now, cut this, add it to the sauce, whatever. Okay, hold on. Just a couple things to keep in mind. This is not the only way to memorize a recipe. In fact, it may not even be the best way. I'm just using it as an example to highlight this memory palace or movie palace technique that I'm explaining. Another thing, you can use any movie. It does not have to be Goodfellas. In fact, if you've never seen Goodfellas or you're not that familiar with it, then it's probably the worst movie you could use. You wanna use movies that are familiar to you, you know, and a lot of people have really close emotions or connections to films. They make them feel good, they make them laugh, give you memories, so that's why I'm talking about using them, but only if they do that to you. I like Goodfellas, I watched it recently, it means something in the context of making garlicky pasta, so I thought it made sense. One more thing, you'll notice that sometimes I'll use parts of the scene, like a specific frame that stuck out of my mind as the place where I'm gonna place an image, or I'll use the general idea of a scene, or I'll play the scene completely out. It doesn't really matter. You have the flexibility of using either. Just do whatever you feel is memorable about that scene. And lastly, you should know this movie really well, like scene for scene. That's what this whole technique hinges on, is that you know this film so well that you have a good idea of the order of scenes. Now, I'm not saying you need to know every single scene of the movie in order, but usually with movies that you know very well, you know it starts with this opening scene, and then there's this scene, and that scene, and more or less you know the structure of this film. That structure is what's gonna keep the order of the information you're trying to memorize. In this case, the steps of the recipe. Got it? Okay, back to editing here. All right, the first scene we're gonna use is the intro. If you remember from the film, is basically three wise guys, good fellas, whatever, they're driving in the car, they hear a thumping in the trunk. Did I hit something? Pull over, open it, there's a not quite yet dead body, and they go ahead and kill the guy again. Still alive. No. So we'll use that scene, all right, to remember the most important part of our recipe, ingredients, right? The six things and kind of how much you need of each. So when I'm thinking about this, I might think of the actual car that they're in. So instead of Ray Liotta's head, all right, this is gonna get weird, but instead of Ray Liotta's head, let's imagine the garlic I need. So I need a half head of garlic. That's how much I'm gonna use for the actual recipe. Half of his head is actually a garlic bulb. Then next to him in the passenger seat up front is Robert De Niro. So let's imagine that we pour olive oil all over him and he's like, gets really upset about it in that Robert De Niro kind of way. And we need to remember that it's a half cup. So just imagine literally he's got a cup half full 
or half empty. Then in the back seat, we have Joe Pesci, and the next ingredient is red pepper flakes. One teaspoon. And you can add more if you like. I don't know how you like things spicy, but for me, one teaspoon is spicy enough. So I'm just gonna imagine taking a little teaspoon and you take it, you fill it with red pepper flakes and you just toss it into Joe Pesci's eyes and it just burns. You can hear him cursing the living daylights out of you in a very Joe Pesci way. All right, now we have three more items. Let's finish it up. So imagine that they pull over and they pop open the trunk. Inside of the trunk, we see a dead guy or almost dead guy. And his head is a big bushel of parsley. Bright green, dead body with a bunch of blood all over it. And for a head, there's a green head of parsley. Now that's when Joe Pesci comes in and starts stabbing him to make sure he's dead. So instead, imagine he's holding lemons, he's just squirting it all over the body. And again, depends how much lemon flavor you like, but I find that if it's a juicy lemon, one lemon is good enough. It's, if it's one of those hard to squeeze, not much juice comes out of it lemons, then two is good. And then finally, you gotta have the pasta, right? It's a pasta dish. So let's imagine that, you know, after they pull over, make sure the body's dead, they gotta dump it and they dig a hole, right? They start putting the body in there. Imagine dumping all of this pasta inside that dug hole. And that's it. The first scene, we have all the ingredients we know that we need. Half head of garlic, half cup of olive oil, one teaspoon of red pepper flakes, a bushel or a head of parsley, one or two lemons, and pasta. All right, now our second scene, okay, is a classic Goodfellas scene, and it's the one where Joe Pesci goes off on Ray Liotta. They're laughing about some joke in their club and Ray Liotta just keeps laughing and under his breath says, oh man, you're so funny. And Joe Pesci's like, I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you? So I'm gonna use that moment in time to remember the first step of our recipe. And this, this step is pretty easy. I'm sure most of you out there who've ever cooked a pasta meal have done this. And that is to boil water, add some salt, cook the pasta, and that's it. Before you start anything, you wanna get this pasta going. And what's important to remember though, is that you wanna cook it slightly al dente. So don't make it too soft. You wanna take it out of the water before it gets completely cooked because you're gonna cook it a little bit in the pan. And this is also important, save a quarter cup of the pasta water. So we have Joe Pesci kind of giving Ray Liotta a hard time. He's surrounded by his other Italian goon henchmen. So let's imagine that as he's saying, am I a clown, do I amuse you? that he's got a big pot of pasta water cooking. He's sprinkling some salt as he says that, and then he adds the pasta. If you wanted to help remember that it's al dente, maybe imagine that he gets so angry at Ray Liotta that he takes the pasta out and he's able to hit him with it because it's still pretty hard. And now that last part, again, it turns out that Joe Pesci is just messing around with him and they laugh it off saying, oh, I'm just messing with you. I almost had him, I almost had him. Imagine at that point, maybe he takes a quarter, puts it in a cup of, of pasta water and hands it to Ray Liotta as a sign of good faith. <laughs> All right, this next scene, also a classic. It's often known as the steady cam scene. Why? Because it starts off on the streets. It's Ray Liotta and his girlfriend, it follows them all through the club of the Copacabana, through the kitchen, passing Every all of his friends who he's tipping along the way, and then they get a seat inside the actual club, and it's this one continuous shot. Anyways, for me, what sticks out is kind of the part where they go through the kitchen. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on, and the kitchen kind of applies to cooking, right? So the next step, while you have your pasta going, it's almost done, I'd say, you're gonna start doing this. In a large saute pan, add your olive oil and start cooking it on medium heat. Now this is important. Don't friggin' blast the heat on this thing. You're gonna ruin the next step. So make sure that you cook the olive oil on medium heat and notice when it starts to shimmer. That's when you're gonna move on to the next step. How do we remember this? Okay, so let's imagine that Ray Liotta's walking through the kitchen and he slips on some olive oil. It's just covered in olive oil all throughout the kitchen because somebody added it to the floor to a medium heat. So you can just try to add that to the picture that it's not too hot, it's shimmering, it's a little shiny and medium heat, that's it. All right, here's the next scene. I call it the pistol whip scene. It's where Ray Liotta goes across the street to his wife or girlfriend's neighbor who apparently rough houser and he beats the living crap out of him with a pistol right on his driveway. Anyway, so the next step is to add our garlic. Now during the prep, obviously there's some prep to this recipe. You gotta half the lemon, you gotta cut the garlic, you gotta cut the parsley. Now for the garlic, remember, it's gotta be razor thin. That's the whole point of this video, okay? So make sure that you've done that beforehand. It takes a little bit of time. 
You can use a razor blade, you can use a very thin knife, but take your time. That's what makes this dish delicious. But anyways, at this point, you're gonna add that garlic to the olive oil that's somewhat hot. Again, it does not need to be hot, hot, hot because your garlic will burn and then the dish is ruined. Nobody likes burned garlic. It smells disgusting, tastes disgusting. Make sure that it kind of cooks slowly, not too hot, and you want it slightly browned. So imagine instead of a pistol he's using to beat the crap out of this guy, imagine it's all the garlic, right? And he's just hitting the guy until it's slightly brown. All right, the next scene is the shine box scene, I call it. And this is where Ray Liotta just has a new club he opens and there's a maid uh, goon guy at the bar and Joe Pesci comes in, they haven't seen each other in a while. Hey, Tommy, all dressed up, all grown up and doing the town, look at this. And basically the, the guy insults Joe Pesci and does not take it well. Now go home and get your shine box. Mother all right, so the next step in your recipe is to add the red pepper flakes. And there's no special thing to that. You already have it as a teaspoon. You're just gonna to toss it into the saute pan, mix it around, and then as soon as you got that mixed in, take everything off the heat because you don't want that garlic to cook anymore. So let's imagine that this guy is talking about the sh shoe shining. He's making fun of Joe Pesci. And since we did this before, we threw red pepper flakes into Joe Pesci's eyes and he cursed about it. So imagine this other mob guy throws a teaspoon of, of red peppers into his face. That brings it all back together. The next scene is the pasta scene where they're cooking in prison. And the next step is to add the pasta to the actual pan, along with that quarter cup of pasta water. So imagine, makes sense, in this pasta dish they're cooking, at some point they gotta put the pasta into the pan. You can remember the pasta water. You know, Paulie's gonna put in some pasta water into the dish as well. The next scene is gonna be the scene where Joe Pesci gets basically whacked. Sorry for the spoiler. The step in the recipe is to add the parsley, add the lemon, toss to combine. So imagine that there he is lying on the floor and uh, they squirt some lemon and pour some parsley over him to cover his body. That's it. All right, and finally the last scene is gonna be at the end where Ray Liotta flips and he's basically on the stand pointing out, ratting out his guys so that he can go to witness protection. So the last step, and this is kind of just a bonus, makes sense, it's not too hard to remember with anything you cook, that's to add salt and pepper to taste. You can add some Parmesan cheese if you like that or not. It tastes good with or without. Just imagine that he's sitting on the stand, sprinkling some salt and pepper, and maybe even shaving some parm, throwing them some shade in the form of Parmesan. So that's how the method works, guys. It's not too hard. Take a bunch of scenes from a movie in order and place images for the things you want to remember onto them. In this case, I use a recipe that I love and hopefully you love too. It's the easiest recipe to remember. Try it, it is delicious. Now, if you're watching my videos, there's a lot of new people watching these videos. Maybe you're on the fence of subscribing. Just do it, just do it. This content is easy to watch and delicious to watch. So make sure you subscribe. I even have a Patreon page now active if you'd like to support me, help make more videos, I'd appreciate it. Treat that garlic nice, my friends. I'm out. <laughs> Just eat it, eat it. Just eat it. Oh my God, put it in your mouth before it gets cold. Mm. Good? Mm-hmm.